We turn now to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. Man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Dear God, we thank you for your word and its blessings upon us. We pray some of those blessings, Lord, will be to be inspired, to receive the information that we need and the understanding that we need in order to accomplish the goals that you have asked of us. So, Lord, bless us with understanding about your word and what it might mean for our lives and the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, here at Pilgrim, we have been focusing on spiritual development and spiritual growth. Spirituality is at the heart of a church. Without spirituality, this organization would only be a social club or a service club. But we are a people who socialize with God and serve God. So our relationship with God is primary to everything that we do. We are a community which is based in the love and grace of God. And from that love and grace we do God's will to love and serve the needs of others as best we are able. We promote and encourage everyone to connect, to restore, renew, and grow in their relationship with God. So we promote and encourage everyone involving themselves in spiritual practices to do just that. We are all well. We are well into the season of Lent, which is a time of focusing on spirituality and spiritual practices. So how are you doing with your spiritual practices for Lent? Have you been reading your scriptures more? Praying more? Meditating more? Contemplating more? And if you haven't been doing more, as in spending time, are you focusing more intently on what you are doing than before. Why why do we do these things for Lent? Well, you can ask why. Why do we come to church in the first place? To see friends? Sure. To work together to help people? Well, yes. To learn about God and each other? Well, you bet. But church is is also for seeking the fulfillment of transcendent things like spirituality. Religion points the way to God and spirituality. Religion is not necessarily spirituality, but it points toward it. We come to church because we have spiritual needs, and we are here to help one another meet ours and their spiritual needs. In the newsletters or in sermons, I have not mentioned spiritual needs as much as I have mentioned spiritual practices. So I thought, here in the middle of Lent, I should tell you about the spiritual needs and and spiritual practices that our spiritual practices are meant to meet. But, got to put it in context first. Let's put it in context. First of all, we need, a need is something without which a person cannot live or function to their optimal health and ability. In fact, we human beings have four areas of needs which overlap each other. We have physical, 
emotional, psychological, and spiritual needs. When I was researching about descriptions of human needs, I found a number of different models. So to describe human needs, I have simplified several versions that I read. Not ideal, I know, but it gives us all a common reference so that we can talk about these things with each other. So let's look at human needs. First of all, we are aware that we have physical needs. We need air. We need water, food, shelter, and clothing. We need air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat. We need shelter from the environment and the creatures around us. We need clothing, which is our portable shelters against the environment and the creatures around us. Without meeting these basic physical needs, our existence would come to an end pretty quickly. Next, we have innate emotional needs. If these needs are not met, we experience some amount of mental illness and emotional malfunction. Our emotional needs include a feeling of security. We need to have a sense of safety so that we may experience our emotions and emotionally express ourselves. We need attention. We need to give and receive attention so we have a sense of self-worth and connectedness to others. We need to feel connected to others and a part of a wider community. We need to feel that we have a place in that community. We need to feel we belong. We need friendship and intimacy where we know that we are connected and accepted for who we are. We need to feel that we have some amount of control over our lives. We feel powerless. To feel powerless is to slowly die emotionally. We need to feel some control, and then we also need to feel that we are competent in something which contributes to others. We also need to be away from others at times and have privacy for reflecting and processing our emotions. And we need to have meaning and purpose in our lives. Security, attention, having a connection and belonging to a community, friendship and intimacy, being accepted, feeling competent and contributing, privacy and having meaning and purpose. These are the emotional needs of human beings. Now, in hearing some of these emotional needs, you might have thought that one or more should be in the psychological or even the spiritual needs category, and you could very well be correct. But once we get past simple physical needs, there is a good deal of overlap in the other three areas of human need. Now, let's consider psychological needs. Some people call these mental or intellectual needs. According to Dr. William Glasser, there are four psychological needs. We need to belong. And to belong means that we need to share and cooperate with others. This can be described as the need to give and to receive love. We human beings are social animals and we need to be in association with other people. Secondly, we need to have personal power or competency which provides a sense of self-worth. This is fulfilled by achieving or accomplishing something and being recognized and respected for those achievements and accomplishments. When people feel powerless, they try to satisfy this need by exerting power over others. This is why people become bullies or rule breakers. Thirdly, we need the freedom to make our own choices, free from the control of other people. In America, we take pride in our freedom, but we also respect other people's freedoms. So we need to have also a responsibility we have to respond to the freedom of others, respecting other people's freedoms by curbing our own. Fourthly, and Ann Hartsuff should like this, we need to have fun. A person is happy when they're having fun. This means we, we relax, we, uh, we find relief, uh, recharge our batteries. This isn't just for children. You know, we adults need to laugh and play. Human beings need to continue to learn, to discover, and interact in creative ways. That's our play. Now, many of those psychological needs seem to also be emotional needs, don't they? In each of these needs, there is an emotional aspect and a psychological aspect. 
We have a feeling need and we have a mental need. Now, now we come to spiritual needs. Once again, we may see some overlapping from our emotional needs and psychological needs. Spiritual things start with ourselves and include things that are beyond us. Spiritual things begin with earthly things and include things which go beyond earthly matter and issues. Spiritual things start with things that are on this plane of existence and then goes beyond it into dimensions that we do not know. We have a spiritual need for a sense of awe and wonder. We need a sense of God. We gather here in this place to worship God. And one definition that I like about worship is that worship is transcendent wonder. We hope our worship will invoke at least at some point, a sense of awe in you. Awe is inspiring. Awe and wonder allow us to see ourselves in the world in new ways. Awe and wonder allows us to understand our rightful relationship with God. Many people find some kind of inspiring awe and wonder in beautiful vistas of nature, such as the Grand Canyon, the, the Rocky Mountains, the Great Lakes, or in a colorful sunrise or sunset. We do not worship the Grand Canyon or the mountains or sunsets, but, we give, uh, but they give us a sense of awe and wonder that there is something beyond this world, something beyond the world that we experience, that the world is much bigger than we are. Even atheists need a sense of wonder and awe Although they do not believe in God, there is still something greater than they are, and they need to recognize that and accept it. The passage from the prophet Isaiah, which Juanita read today, speaks of the awe and wonder that Isaiah has about God. Isaiah quotes God as saying to us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is great, and God is beyond our imaginings. Realizing that there is something greater than ourselves brings us a sense of humility. And we need to have a sense of humbleness. The reality is that we are but a small part of a world which is much much bigger than we are. Humbleness is a healthy response to awe and wonder. But we can only experience awe and wonder if we are open to it. We must look for the wonder of this world and be in awe of the greatness of the one who created it. And if you sincerely seek God, you will find God. And finding God starts by being open to the awe and wonder of this world around us. But you have to seek. In fact, the Lord is waiting for you to seek God. Another spiritual need is to have meaning and purpose in our lives. Meaning and purpose come in many forms. The meaning and purpose for someone could be just satisfying their physical appetites, the basic level of human instinct. But to fulfill our spiritual needs, our meaning and purpose needs to transcend ourselves to include something greater than ourselves. In fact, to meet our spiritual need for meaning and purpose, we need a purpose beyond ourselves, beyond our own life, a purpose in which we are willing to die for. That meaning and purpose is tied up with certain values and character traits. A spiritual need is to be inclusive of people, especially the inclusion of people with fairness and justice. We live in an unjust world, but we have a sense of justice that we must strive for. That need for justice leads us to strive for honesty, truth, and integrity. Our need for justice also ties us in with our need for acceptance. Our need to be accepted and our need to accept others. Acceptance takes many facets. We must accept ourselves. We have to live with ourselves and judge that we are worthy to live. We have to accept other people. 
We need to live with other people. We have to get along with other people. So we have to accept them from one extent to another. You know, we can totally embrace somebody, or we can go to the other extreme and barely tolerate them. And there are, I, I know that there are people uh, you know, that we find very hard to get along with and accept. They're people we don't get along with, but unless we are emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually damaged, we want to try. It is a need of ours. Intimately tied with, into these facets of acceptance are also the acceptance of this world, our lives, and God. In order to function in this world, we need to accept this world. We may want to change things. We want to make it more fair. We want to make it more just. But we must first accept the world before we can change it. And in one way or another, we must accept that there is a higher power in this world which is beyond our control. Most of us call this God. But even atheists have to accept that there is something greater than which they are not in control of. And we have to accept a God where we don't understand why a good and loving God would create a world in which there is suffering of innocence. Finally, we return once again to belonging. Our need to belong is rooted in our emotional and psychological needs and extends to our spiritual needs. We have a spiritual need to be rooted. We need a connection to our community, to a history, to our place in the universe. Most of us identify ourselves as Americans. We embrace that we belong to this country, to its ideals and its principles, to its history, and its place in the universe. The same could be said for embracing that we belong to God. In, we belong to God in Christ and the Christian life. The scriptures tell us God's message to we human beings over and over again is that we belong to God. We are God's children. We are the heirs of God's covenant, and therefore, we are God's family. God said it, so now we just need to accept it as our own. Now, I hope, I hope in going over these human needs that we can all start to understand ourselves and others better. Many of us deny that we have some of these needs, and we are perpetually unhealthy, imbalanced, and disabled. I hope that in understanding what our human needs are, that our journey to grow spiritually will increase and be strengthened. And part of our growing spiritually is to understand ourselves better and accept ourselves for who we are. That's why we began our journey through Lent on Ash Wednesday by singing the hymn, Just As I Am. That song tells us that God accepts us just as we are so that we can accept ourselves just as we are. And then move toward God. When it comes to fulfilling our spiritual needs or helping others to fulfill their own spiritual needs, we are like the fig tree in Jesus' parable today. Yes, the fig tree is expected to bear fruit after a certain amount of time, so are we expected to bear the fruit of love, compassion, and kindness. Growing spiritually increases our capacity to love, to be compassionate, and to be kind. If we do not produce the good fruit of the Spirit, well, then we really haven't grown. And if we do not grow spiritually and produce the fruit of the Spirit, then our own unhealthiness will cut us down from spiritual disease. There are many people who are spiritually dying every day. But Christ is the gardener in God's vineyard who came to nourish us with God's word and to quench our spiritual thirst with the Holy Spirit in our lives. So take advantage of this gift and grow in God's spirit and thereby produce good fruits that satisfy the human needs in us all. Amen.